Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an incredible day. Now today guys, I'm going to be potting up, or potting on I should say, my little tiny camo serious um, type of cacti. I've got a mixture of some camo labivias and camo serious um, hybrids, Main, mainly camo serious, different types. And as you can see, these were gifted to me mainly as cuttings from various friends that I have here in the cactus world <laughs> and um I'll just show you here they're, they're little definitely um little cuttings that have definitely passed their pots they need to be potted on and what i've done here i've got the next size up for them and it might not look like much of a big pot but i'm going to be potting them up to the next size up and um, what i'm going to be doing then is keeping them dry until the following spring when i'm going to be giving them a bit of water they're going to have the um late summer early fall now to settle into their new pots to show lots of different types and as you can see the pot's gone roots are starting to come through the bottom there and i'm going to share with you the repotting video um, and uh, what i've done i've made up my own uh, cactus compost mix which i like to do and um, i've made a video on how to make your own cactus and succulent soil so if you haven't seen it or you're not sure how to make your own um, links up above to that video because it saves money and you're in control of what goes into it but this is just personally my preferred method I like to use um, John Innes number two for potting on plants which is a loam based soil that just has a small amount of peat I'm not a big fan of peat because it's hard to get good quality peat and most peat seems to be bad quality and um, taken from areas that is you know environmentally not friendly but John Innes is more of a loam based and what I've done here is added extra horticultural sand and I've used perlite um, and I've used a quarter of each and what you can do you can either use you could if you don't want to use perlite you can use grit um, in this case I prefer to use I like I do prefer to use grit but I'm using perlite because grit is not always easy to walk home with from the garden centers perlite does the same the same job and I've added extra horticultural sand so um making it very well draining and the, the the perlite gives extra aeration so that's my soil mix and now i'm going to show you roth repotting them all now i may not show you the whole entire process because it might be a bit boring but I'm, i'll show you the first two or three i pot up and then show you the finished result and just check how the how the camera is running there yep you can see everything that's good so then let's get going now first of all we will do this little one here and this has had as you can see wondering why it's a very browny yellowy color um, it had a bad case of spider mite a few months ago and i treated it with neem oil by um, spraying neem oil on and horticultural soap mixed together and i also used it as a soil drench and it's glad to say it's got rid of the spider mites now and it's making a recovery but um, that's just something that the poor little plant had to go through and camisarius are very very prone to um, spider mite it's something they're just prone to luckily they nearly always recover if you get it in time and look at that they're great root system now when it comes to repotting cacti and succulents or plants in general always good good idea to check the root system over to check there's no signs of hidden pests and bugs um, and if the, the roots are very very compacted it might be a good idea to gently tease the roots loose before putting them into the new soil and I'm going to be checking all these individually. This case, although it's root bound, it's not overly root bound. So this should be okay just to go straight into there with the fresh soil. And um, it will then sort of have time to climatize into its new pot. What I'm going to be doing then is putting a little bit of soil in the bottom. Now, um, if you're new to growing cacti and succulents and you want to know how to repot a cactus, well, these are very easy because they're, although they've got spines on, they don't hurt at all. But I've made a video on how to repot a cactus and I, I show um, two different varieties. One, a big, large bowel cactus that's very, very spiny and one, a tall cactus that's also spiny. So two difficult ones there. And um, I've also got many videos on repotting a lot of my plants, all different sizes and shapes. So links up above to that video on how to repot a cactus and um, do check that out and as I say a little bit of soil in the bottom there gently placing it in like so and then you want to put a bit of soil around the edges so this isn't necessarily a how-to video this is just more a video vlog to be honest of me potting up but it's always good to share a few tips if, if you are new I mean not everybody when I was new to the hobby I was at only 11 when I got into cacti and um, I didn't have a clue there wasn't the internet 
that there is today and the only books was a few dodgy books from the local library if any at all so I had to a lot of what I've learned is what I've learned myself and I think sometimes what I you know plants I've lost and what I've grown and had success with has always been good for my experience for sharing it on this channel because it's not as easy now I mean people could just go go into any go online and find out how to care for a lot of plants and um, even books today are very good and um, just everything really and, but when I was young there was nothing and I had no friends at all that were into growing plants I was the only one I was a, a lonely sort of plant grower and then my friends were into music and pop bands they thought I was some weirdo but uh, <laughs> well they didn't think they knew and yeah they still think that to this day and yes they're right but um, there's something now you know being online on the internet having a YouTube channel where there's people from all over the world that are equally as balmy as me and um, it's wonderful because I met my um, amazing fiance Hans a lot of people be familiar with Hans through um, our love and passion for growing these plants so you know it acts as a dating agency too <laughs> quite bizarre really and there you go that's the first one and uh, that's done and I say just gently going to make sure you get the soil all around the edges of the pot gently tapping it in you don't want to press down too tight because you want to make sure the roots have got aeration and that's why I like to use a bit of extra perlite this is purely additional it's just I like the the drain just the first one done now this one wasn't labeled um, some of them are mystery plants that my friends give me they didn't know they just took little peanuts off their stub endings as you say off their off their own plants I wasn't sure but that one um, that's the first one done I've got labels for a lot of them and um, the next one then we've got here camo libivia and um, this is um, variety cv violet and um, that's a um, lovely label there also gifted to me as a cutting from a friend also and gently squeezing the pot out Oop. Here's the tray here that's that and uh, that's again great uh, loose root system there so no problem there and that's good grit i can use that again so again potting this up Take that out of the way, the old pot, and a uh, little bit of soil in the bottom again. Up there, a little bit of soil down the edges. So if we get a little bit of hard bits of soil, I just loosen it up with my finger. That's great. And then you can sometimes put a bit of top dressing on the top with a bit of with a bit of grit as well. As I say, the problem I have with grit is that because I have to walk back from the bus stop in Honzi. Um, it's heavy to walk back with a big bag of grit and uh, so it's easier to just use perlite in the soil but it's all about the aeration as well. Gently pressing that down there and put a bit of that on the top again using up a good, good bit of soil there, a bit of top dressing and that one's done. And as I say I'm only potting them up into the next size pot. The reason why I do that is because I, I'm not a fan of potting up cacti in very large pots. Um, I like to just go up a size. Uh, it's always safer um, to under pot and over pot a cactus. Because I've never ever, from my experience of growing cacti over many, many years, I've never ever lost a cactus from being under potted. But I have from being over potted. So that's just a little tip for you. You're better to under pot and then pot on again a few months down the line than you are a big, big pot and then you find it sitting in damp soil and it rots. So that's, that's that one there. This one has a little label. So Camelobivia Violet. Put that in. There, that's the next one. And again, you probably all know this anyway, but always a good tip just to leave a little bit of a gap from the top. Sometimes when I buy plants, you find that their soil is right at the top, and then when you go to water them, it just. It is a bit of a gap, a um, couple of inches or so below where the soil line is. So when you do water the, water the plant, it's not going to just come straight over the top. That's common sense, but you believe. Uh, how many plants are sold like that so and then this one here um, this shouldn't take me too long I don't want this video to be too long but uh, Raybutia Torquata and this is weird it's like a weird little plant isn't it um, this is actually a Raybutia it's not a camo camiserius but the reason why I've got it with these is it's very camiserius like so it's easier just to keep them all together in the same type of conditions as well Camelobivia and Raybutia cacti are very cold hardy so they overwinter very well here in the polytunnel and as long as they're kept dry and you don't water them they'll survive very cold temperatures there you go the same that in there but it's so um camiserius like 
that's it just keep them all together there you go again putting the soil around making sure it's all in between the gaps and just gently pressing it down and not pressing it really firm any bits like that to just squeeze my finger to loosen it up so you, the, brute, the roots can breathe if it's not pressed too hardly down and um, just a tip as well, I'm always being asked about sand, why I recommend using sand. And people say, can I just use normal child's building sand and that? Well, no, you can't because if you use normal building sand, um, it's going to, the problem is it can compact in the soil and make the soil too heavy. So you want to make sure that you use horticultural, like a sharp type of sand, especially for plants. Um, I'm going to put there a bit of sure. You know, your plants aren't necessarily going to die if you use builder sand, but it's not the best drainage. So they could die if it's if the drainage isn't good. Um, so now this one, a Lincoln inspiration. That's his camera sale. So just check how the camera is doing, how it's running. Yep, it stops after 15 minutes. You see, so I have to keep an eye on it after this one. <laughs> Squeezing the pot again, and there you go. And uh, again, this had a case of spider mite. Just show you what it looks like there. It's a lot of people think it's sun damage and they don't realise till the damage is too late, but that's I'm I'm sort of used to spider mite now over many years of a growing cacti, that's what it looks like. As I say, sadly you don't notice the damage till it's gone and they're so micro even somebody who has the best eyesight, they're very hard to see um, with the human eye. Um, they're very microscopic. Um, but neem oil I found good success, or any type of horticultural oil as well. Um, So what I want to do is I use a little spoon as well if I can find that. Yeah, here it is. If it's a bit tight to put in around the edges, use one of these tiny little teaspoons and just go in the down there and then use the end of that just to tap around it there. That's a good uh whoop. <laughs> Sorry if this video is going long. If you want to just pull it forward, you can. I personally love watching repotted videos on YouTube, and the longer the better. But I understand time is paramount with everybody, including myself, and I really enjoy watching everyone's videos. But there's only so many hours in the day, and when you, you're working and you also got your YouTube channel and you've got a life as well, it's just trying to fit everything in. But um, it's all doing the best you can do, I guess. And that's the next one done. There you go. And again, gently pressing down. Oh, there's something I really love repotting. It's just so therapeutic and the smell of the earth and everything. Oh God, I love it. It really is so therapeutic. And there you go, that's that little fella done. Make an inspiration. That one's done. Now this one, again one that's not labelled and they do look uh, practically identical when they're not in flower so it's very hard to really ID them until they do flower. But they're great, Cambaceras by the way, great little cacti to grow if you haven't got a lot of space um, because they are compact, they're clumpy plants so they're great if you've got apartments or small window seals um, and they're also great if you also have greenhouses and rooms you can't really heat as such because again they they don't need they can take minus temperatures if they're kept dry great very common the most common type of camaceris is the um, camacella silvestrii which has the beautiful orange flowers and commonly nicknamed the peanut cactus um, because of its peanut like as you can see peanut like little stems and these are all hybrids off that original plant um, that was in cultivation originally. These are many, many hybrids. And a lot of them are crossed with Raybutia and you know Labivia because they're sort of similar in appearance and um, how they sort of flower and their conditions. And don't ask me about how they hybrid uh, hybrid them all. You know, I really don't know. <laughs> it's clever anyway. All cross pollination and all that. And clever. There you go, that's the next one. Lovely, that's the other one done. And it shouldn't take me too long now. So, Camacera silvestri. Um, 
Camasil Silvestri, El Giganti. So that's the Giganti version of Camasil Silvestri. So again, this is a hybrid of the original one. Again, had the spider mite damage, as you can see. It's making a slow recovery. Some of the old dead roots back. And what I do actually, although it, this time of year now, because it's coming very close to the, the fall, I will be keeping all these dry. I won't be giving these a scrap of water now until the spring. But even if this was a height of summer, I still would not be watering these straight away after repotting. Um, I know some growers who do and they don't have a problem, but personally, again, this is only my experience of growing plants over many, many years. Um, whenever, when I first got into cacti as a child, I used to repot and water straight away and I lost a few, even in the height of summer. So, you know, it is recommended when you repot a cactus um, to, I prefer it is to keep it dry for a week or two before I give it water. This gives a chance for any roots that have been damaged to um, to just repair itself because as, as you see there's some roots have come away there um, and if I was to just pop this up now and give it water straight away there's a possibility that it could rot if the plant is sort of dormant or has it's uh, gone a bit um, damaged from the roots. But as in this case, because I won't be watering any of these now until the spring, there's no chance of that happening got plenty of time to recover itself but as I say I even if it was the height of summer I like to just leave leave it a, a week or two before I start to reintroduce water only with cacti and succulents now with a house plant and the type of plants not a problem at all um, but as I say this is just my experience <laughs> and uh, there you go that's another one done and uh, this one Again, another hybrid, again, another damage from the bad spider mites there. And, uh, it's a difficult thing with spider mites is it's quite hard to treat, as in a lot of systemics don't really cater for spider mites. So um, neem oil is what I find I have good success with. But other growers would recommend different things. Um, it all depends what you, what you prefer. And um, have made a few videos on how I treat my plants with neem oil and uh, I will put a link up to um, a couple of them videos of when I um, show you how I use neem oil on the plants to, pre to prevent and treat pests it's something that um, you need to do a couple of times to for like as all pesticides you do have to use twice but it's a, a natural one which you know I'm somebody I don't like killing pests on plants um, I'm vegan which you know I don't like killing anything including pests um, but sadly it's doing what you can do when you have when your plants are covered in mealybug and spider mite you just have to treat it It'd be like if your head was covered in head lice <laughs> you could just say I don't want to kill them I'll let them be because it's just not practical so I always look at the most, the next most natural method and, you know, best method. I also like using isopropyl rubbing alcohol as well for dabbing pests off because that is a sort of a humane way of dealing with them also. But um, neem oil is more of a prevention also to use as well as that. So I've made many videos on what I, I use and what I use as a vegan um, in, that, in this case. It's just doing the best what you can do. Uh, that's there and then this one now this is Camocereus jubilee this has a gorgeous orange flower on it a very large orange flower actually gorgeous too uh, again always checking the root system that's perlite not mealybug but uh, root mealybug is something that you have to check when you do repot your plants but trouble is with perlite it does look very much like root mealybug a good tip is if, if you're using perlite and you're not sure if that's root mealybug or not is to squeeze it perlite just goes into white powder mealybugs go pink or grey green um, from them but in this case it is just perlite again a bit of that in the bottom and if you've watched this far well done to you that's all I can say <laughs> but uh Nearly done, then after this I've just got four left and what I'll probably do then is stop the video and show you the finished result with them all because otherwise it's going to be way too long of a video. But another part of me says I've only got four left, I might as well carry on. <laughs> right then, as I say you can always fast forward, well not fast forward as such, it's not a tape but you know what I mean. 
put the uh, mouse cursor a bit further up. That's that there. And tap it, tap it into place. Camaceras Jubilee. Again, you want to press it down without being too. What's that? And this little one, and there's just these three. Then again, this is easy. And uh, again, I put them in the pots. These are slightly bigger pots than what I'm using with these because these are slightly larger. They're already in that size already, you see, so they're going into the next size. Of, that is a dead flower head. It's just been like that. It's not coming to flower. So, um, yeah, great. When well, you think these were all cuttings, I mean, it's great to see the root system on them, I have to say. Very good. Um, it's wonderful. Oops. Now, have I got a pot for that? That's the pot for that. that. I'm missing a pot, so I will put it down, down here. It just... It's been one pot less. That's great. And then, wonderful. And, uh, good little tip just to shake, tap the pot lightly, and that helps the soil to go down the sides if you can't really reach them. Tap, 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 tap. That's great. I'll just check it on, the, on the camera. Yeah, that's okay. And um, that's that one done. Now, three. Yeah. The roots do that. I desperately to, desperate to be repotted. Squeezing the pots. I always prefer plastic pots than clay. Clay do look lovely and they're great for drying out quicker. But sadly, it's difficult when it comes to repotting, you see, because the roots tend to go all the way around with clay pots. And that there, a bit more. A bit more of a wider. And that might need a bit more of a wider, and it should be okay for that. Again. Tapping it around. Probably do a bit of a bigger pot. This one, I may pop that on next spring. It will do for the winter. And gently tapping down. And that. A serious hybrid, and uh, as I say, most of them, if, if they're labelled at all in a garden centre, is just down as a hybrid. But uh, soon, know when it flowers, we can go back there. So I'm start putting these back now. Just these two left. That's great. Nearly done, guys. And. Uh, I've got a load of repotting to do um, in time before the winter kicks in, guys. So lots more repotting videos coming up. So stay tuned, and uh, hopefully you pick up a few things on the way if you're new to growing plants. And it's great, gently tucking it in again. Again, you don't want to press down too hard because you want the roots to breathe, but you want to press down firm enough so the plant doesn't fall out of the pot, obviously. And then top it in so it goes all the way around. That's it. That's that one. Oops. Oh, now look at that. That's I'm going to show you something in a minute, guys. And I'll put the label on that. Camaceras Hybrid. So that one's done there. Um, these peanut cacti, you only have to look at them and the, um, the stems come off really easy. They're so easy to propagate. And um, normally with a cactus cutting or, or any type of, when you pull a baby off from the plant, the cactus, 
leave it for a couple of days to callus over before putting the soil but in this case it's practically dry so I'm going to put this in at the same time could pot it up into its own little individual pot but in this case I'm going to put it back into the same pot and um, that's just how easy it is to these you had, the big camisaria silvestri plants the big multi-headed ones you don't need to look at them and their peanuts fall off them but they're easy so easy to propagate they're great to give to friends as well so um, that's that Might give that its own little pot and it could be a little giveaway. And that's that. There's that in there, just check where we are with the, the video. Oh, that's good. <laughs> from the very long video. This has also came off as well. It has actually got a little root on it already. So again, all you need to do with these is, um, usually I probably would recommend actually waiting an hour or two before putting in here, but I know that's fully dry, so I don't have to worry. The soil is also dry. So I'm gonna pop that in there. And uh, there again, that will root. And once they've rooted, then I'm gonna be, give them away as little cuttings to friends. There you go, that's it guys. That is all of them completed. So if you've watched it all this way, you deserve a gold medal. <laughs> and um, I wanna thank you all so much for your incredible support and um, your likes and your comments. I cannot thank you enough, it means a lot. And um, it really, it's just wonderful to be growing these plants and sharing the love and passion for growing cacti and succulents and plants in general with everyone from all over the world. So. Hope you enjoyed the video guys and I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness. Don't know if you can see me, let's put this up a little bit more, see if I can turn this just so, yeah, <laughs> tons of happiness and heaps and heaps of plant power as always from the Emerald Isle and until the next video, bye.